Imagine you're hosting a party, but the room you have is quite small and you need to make it feel spacious and comfortable for all your guests. You employ different methods to gain space and create the perfect party atmosphere. One method you use is called proximal stripping, which is like rearranging furniture in the room. You selectively remove a bit of excess material from certain teeth, just like moving a bulky couch or table to create more floor space. By doing this, you make room for other teeth to align properly just as you make space for guests to move around comfortably. Another method is arch expansion, which is like stretching the walls of the room. You use special devices that gently widen the dental arches, allowing more space for teeth to find their rightful positions. It's like magically expanding the walls of the room, accommodating more guests without feeling cramped. Sometimes you need to make adjustments to specific areas. For example, if you notice a corner of the room is crowded, you can derotate or upright tilted teeth, just like straightening a leaning lamp or a slanted picture frame. By making these adjustments, you ensure that everything in the room is aligned and balanced, just as you strive for proper alignment of teeth. In some cases, extraction becomes necessary to create space, similar to removing a bulky piece of furniture from the room. Just as you might need to temporarily remove an oversized chair to create more space, certain teeth may need to be extracted to allow others to align properly. Throughout the process, you carefully evaluate the space requirements and consider the individual circumstances, just as you would assess the room size, guest count and specific needs for your party. You aim to achieve controlled and stable expansion, just like ensuring the room feels spacious and comfortable throughout the event. By employing these methods of gaining space, you transform the small room into a beautifully organized and welcoming space for your party guests. Similarly, in orthodontics, these methods help create ample space within the jaws, allowing teeth to align properly and achieve a stunning smile. So, whether you're organizing a party or undergoing orthodontic treatment, gaining space is all about making smart adjustments, expanding when necessary, and creating a harmonious environment for everything to fall into place. Cheers to a spacious and unforgettable experience. So, to sum up, there are various methods of gaining space, including proximal stripping, arch expansion, distalization of molars, uprighting of tilted teeth, derotation of posterior teeth, proclination of anterior teeth, and extraction. Proximal stripping, also known as reproximation, is a method used to create space by selectively reducing the width of certain teeth. It's like slicing the teeth to make room. Usually, the mandibular incisors are the ones that undergo proximal stripping. However, it can also be done on the maxillary front teeth and premolars in both arches to create space. The teeth that are chosen for proximal stripping depend on a few factors. First is the location of excess tooth material, the mandibular anterior segment, the maxillary anterior segment or the mandibular or maxillary posterior segments. The second one is the amount of discrepancy. Next is the thickness of enamel present on the teeth of the region. And finally, the carious or oral hygiene status of the patient. Indications for proximal stripping include cases where the space requirement is minimal, typically around 2.5 to 3 mm. It is commonly performed when there is an excess of tooth material, as indicated by Bolton's analysis, usually less than 2.5 mm. While it is frequently done in the mandibular anterior segment, it can also be performed in other areas of the dentition based on the specific needs of the patient. Contraindications for proximal stripping involve certain considerations. It is generally avoided in patients who are susceptible to dental caries. Additionally, proximal stripping is not recommended in young individuals due to the possibility of having large pulp chambers in their teeth, which may pose complications. Therefore, careful evaluation of the patient's oral health status and individual circumstances is necessary when deciding to proceed with proximal stripping as a treatment option. The procedure for undertaking proximal stripping involves three steps, assessing space requirements, selecting the teeth and amount of enamel to be stripped, and enamel stripping. In the first step, assessing space requirements, to determine the need for proximal stripping, the arch perimeter analysis or caries analysis is employed. An ideal candidate for proximal stripping is a case with tooth material excess of less than 2.5 mm per arch. Bolton's analysis can also help identify the areas of excess tooth material. Now, in the second step, which is selecting teeth and amount of enamel to be stripped, 
Mandibular incisors are commonly stripped, but all teeth except the banded molars can undergo stripping. Maxillary anterior teeth may be stripped if there is excess tooth material in that region and sufficient enamel thickness. Intraoral periapical views are recommended to assess enamel thickness, with the long cone technique preferred. No more than half the enamel thickness should be removed and space distribution should be spread across multiple teeth and mesial and distal surfaces. Finally, enamel stripping methods include metal abrasive strips, perforated diamond discs, safe sided corborundum discs and thin fissure burrs. Metal abrasive strips have abrasive particles on one side and are usually safe sided. Special holders are available for convenience. The size of the particles determines the coarseness of the strips with fine abrasive strips commonly used to prevent deep enamel scratching. Perforated diamond discs are flexible discs which are extensively used and can strip adjacent teeth. Safe sided corborundum discs were initially used but they have limitations due to rigidity and brittleness. They have a higher risk of breaking, potentially causing injury to patients and clinicians. They are challenging to use in the posterior region. Thin fissure burrs, which include straight or tapered burrs, can be used for proximal stripping but tend to leave deep scars on the enamel. Metallic abrasive strips are typically used afterward to polish the region. Proximally stripped teeth may experience increased sensitivity due to enamel thickness reduction. This makes them more susceptible to sensitivity and caries. The scratched enamel surface also attracts more plaque, necessitating strict oral hygiene maintenance and fluoride application. These measures help reduce sensitivity, protect the teeth from acid attacks and prevent caries. Proximal stripping offers several advantages. In cases where minimal space is needed, it can potentially eliminate the need for extractions, providing a non-extraction treatment option. By reducing excess tooth material, it helps improve interdigitation, overbite and overjet. The broad contacts resulting from proximal stripping contribute to the stability of the treatment outcomes. Additionally, it allows for the correction of localized malalignments without involving a large number of teeth, which is especially beneficial for adult patients. However, proximal stripping has its drawbacks. One common issue is post-procedure sensitivity experienced by patients. The roughened enamel surface created during stripping increases the susceptibility to caries. Another challenge is reproducing the exact tooth morphology, particularly for maxillary anterior teeth, which may affect the aesthetic outcome. Additionally, the loss of proximal contacts due to stripping can result in food getting lodged between the teeth, leading to potential hygiene concerns. That's it for this video. Let's recap. Methods of gaining space in orthodontics include proximal stripping, arch expansion, derotation of teeth and extraction. Proximal stripping, also known as reproximation, is a method used to create space by selectively reducing the width of certain teeth. The teeth that are chosen for proximal stripping depend on a few factors. First is the location of excess tooth material, the mandibular anterior segment, the maxillary anterior segment or the mandibular or maxillary posterior segments. The second one is the amount of discrepancy. Next is the thickness of enamel present on the teeth of the region. And finally, the carious oral hygiene status of the patient. The procedure for undertaking proximal stepping involves three steps. Assessing space requirements, selecting the teeth and amount of enamel to be stripped, and enamel stripping. Make Torchwell your study buddy to learn anytime, anywhere without carrying a load of books with you. Sign up now and get a free trial.